You are watching MLS Next Pro, a clash in the Western Conference tonight with playoff implications. Minnesota United FC2 are back at home, winners of two consecutive matches and looking to continue that form against St. Louis City 2, the hottest offensive team in the league. Eight goals in its last two outings. You wonder if that could continue tonight against the recently stingy Minnesota defense. The separation in the Western Conference table is slim. Colorado remains at the top as they have for much of this season. However, you look at that playoff line, St. Louis City 2 creeping ever closer to the top seven after their last couple of performances. Minnesota on the right side of it right now with just four points in separation between seventh and eighth as the playoff push starts to shape into form. Great to have you with us at National Sports Center Stadium in Blaine. I'm AJ Ricketts alongside you for this one tonight. Sneaky good matchup in Minnesota this evening. The Loons winner of back-to-back -back games conceding just one goal in those pair of matches. Last week, a 1-0 shutout at LAFC earning them three points. St. Louis have had a field day the last two times out. Goals coming in all sorts of fashions, clearly in a position now to challenge for a playoff spot. The starting 11 for Minnesota tonight, led by head man Cameron Knowles. It's a 4-3-3 shape for the Loons. For Diogo Pacheco, headlines things at the front with eight goals and four assists on the season. A formidable pairing with Cam Lacey and Emmanuel Iwe also providing a proven attacking threat. 12 goals between the pair this season. Goalkeeper Fred Emmings makes his 18th start of the season. For St. Louis City 2, head coach Bobby Murphy leads the way. It'll be a 4-4-2 look for City 2. This organization, very high on forward Caden Glover, who spent time with the first team, had a lot of great experience in the U-17 playoffs. He's one of the more natural forwards up front, and with a bit more consistency now with the second team, things are starting to come together offensively for this group. Michael Creek will be in goal for St. Louis tonight. Sixth appearance of the season for Creek. We're just about set to get things underway. 68 degrees, 70% chance of rain this evening. It's been on and off throughout the day. But it's held steady throughout the course of warm-ups and hopefully will over the course of this match. We Minnesota United FC2 and St. Louis City 2. Adam Zaret, our head referee this evening. Jay Ricketts here with you on MLS Season Pass. Rachel Smith, our assistant referee, along with Jake Brochu, Ryan Farrell, who will be the fourth official. We are underway from Blaine, Minnesota. Glad to have you with us. Fun matchup here today. St. Louis in the road whites this evening. From left to right. <laughs> and though it's St. Louis with the headlines in terms of their offensive prowess over the last couple of weeks, this is a Minnesota squad that can score with the best of them at times. Iwe, Lacey, Pacheco. It's very strong front third for the Loons. These are Armstrong with his first touches. Lewis trying to work around the middle here. No foul on that contact as it trickles back towards midfield. Opening now for St. Louis, pushing forward. That's a terrific pass center, just a tad too heavy though. Caden Glover couldn't get behind it. it. Trickles out, it will be a corner kick though for City 2. Just a bit too much weight to it, but that's the right idea there. Max Schneider will walk over to take the first corner kick for City 2 this evening. Schneider, a 22 year old out of Marshall, where he had a very distinguished career for the Hurt. Part of that 2020 NCAA College Cup team. Schneider whips this one in. Low driven ball easily sent away. Oh, 
Josh Mayer will play it back to Michael Creek. Creek, the 25-year-old, signed this past March. Appeared in 14 matches, 13 starts last season for City 2. So hasn't seen as much time over the course of this year, but still a decent amount of time to his name in the course of the season. Maybe over the past month or two, more than the early part of the year when he played just one match in the first 10. Devin Paddleford to initiate this on the near side for some assistance. It's it back from Malik Jesse Khan. Khan intercepts. Tried to play it quickly back to Zaydan Bello. And another throw here. Yep, this time it's going over to Minnesota. St. Louis, take your pardon. Do a hard foul here in the early going, but not worthy of a card at this young juncture of the match. It's booted away from Fred Emmings, deep to the near side. from the Minnesota bench there. City bench after the contact. Gil Perez, victim of that. Second look at it here. A shove from Cedric Jabot. Perez just needing a moment, the 18-year-old second homegrown player in the club's history. Signing that MLS contract earlier this year. So many talented young prospects in this City 2 organization. An opportunity to see both Perez and Caden Glover in action for City 2 here tonight. Jesse Kahn could not prevent that from going out of play. Talked with St. Louis head man Bobby Murphy before the match just about this recent surge in offense. He said, I, I think this has been building for a while. We've created a lot of chances throughout the year and just haven't been converting them. So I think we always talk about re things reverting back to the mean. Perhaps we're catching up for all the chances we missed early. Hopefully haven't used up all that offensive success, but it was a good week. There's a lot of excitement. St. Louis City 2 actually set an MLS Next Pro record for attendance. There are over 9,000 fans at City Park. That's a good ball in. Caden Glover has it inside the 18. Quick turn, plays it back. Glover with it. Looks to center. Cleared away at the moment. Not for too long. City 2 right back in the attacking box. Hitachi lays it off. Gets it back. Just outside the six. Tries to flick it center. Shot took a deflection. Probably could have got a little bit more pace under that. St. Louis will get to reset again. Murphy was talking about that, that match back at home. The attendance record said all throughout the week we heard there was going to be a big crowd, maybe a record crowd at first. We heard 4,000, and it was 6,000. All of a sudden, we almost 10,000 people show up. I was really grateful for that support, that atmosphere. And the team certainly rewarded their fans. What a day it was at City Park. It took them a little bit to get going. He felt after the water break, they reset themselves really well. They regrouped. He said, we have to manage the adrenaline. Wear yourself out a little bit. I think we did that. It was hot. It was muggy. But after that water break, before the half, a pair of goals. And we were smooth sailing the rest of the way.
It's been fun to see the support in the crowds in different venues throughout the course, throughout the, uh, the league this season. Remember the Austin's home debut this year, the sellout crowd that they had for their debut? St. Louis has always brought the support. It is a soccer town. Next pro getting some good crowds and support over the course of this season. There's Emmanuel Iwe evading defenders. Down from space. Now Malik Jesse Khan. Nothing in the end there. High pressure here from Minnesota, causing problems. They win back possession. Rodas. And the foul on Palfer. Will it be more than that? Talking to. An extra whistle as Battleford was jogging off. Out of acknowledgement to the official for a moment. A little too heavy with the touch. And bowling over his man. Both sides feeling things out here in the early going. The first 10 minutes or so of this match. City 2 sitting on 30 points in the standings. Soto's above the line as of this juncture. Any time left to play. Pacheco wins possession out on the far side. Good physicality there. And a strong run being made. We're cutting inside. A miscommunication there with Iwe. Acknowledges the idea. Iwe, the Nigerian native, 22-year-old out of St. Cloud University. Iwe, actually the first Minnesota native to be signed by uh, FC2. They moved there from Nigeria. difference in production so far this season up front for both of these sides. We referenced it a little bit at the top of the broadcast. Batachi and Glover, the two starting forwards for St. Louis today. Glover has four goals on the year, Batachi with two, so the pair of them with six. And of course, you reference the success of Pacheco this year. Eight goals by himself. Lacey has seven. Iwe has five. They're happy with the progress Glover has made. Some MLS time to his name as well. Bounced towards the 18. Oh, options here now. An extra touch. Batachi. Oh, it's just outside the post. An extra movement to the left earned Batachi some space. And he had some things to work with on the near side. Tried to slip it between the two defenders. It came off the post. Glover was there to potentially rebound. It's probably the best chance for either side here in the first 11 plus minutes. Tachi was that close to his third goal of the year. This will be a set piece here after the foul. Stopping that moment of transition it was Iwe, not carded for it. Certainly things building for Minnesota there. Clipped in. Headed away for the moment. And a foul on Khan. Thank <laughs> you. 
Bit of skill from Batachi a few moments ago to earn himself that shot. It was not a given on the first touch. He was able to sidestep to his left. There certainly was an avenue for a potential goal there. Pressure earns possession. It's Batachi again. Lines went up. Batachi curls it into the back of the net. That's a sensational start for St. Louis here. It's 1 0. Oh, he lined this one up, and he would not miss for a second time. It's the third goal of the season for Faisal Batachi, the London native. How about this? Watch him center of your screen. F defender does step up, but it's beautifully whipped around and placed in the top corner of the net. Nothing that Fred Emmings could do about that. And the first goal of tonight's match goes to St. Louis. Too talented a player to miss two goals in quick succession like that. That was probably a more difficult attempt, wouldn't you think? Much further out, closer to the, the 18. Whipping it around the defender who stepped forward. He made that look easy. Really well done from Faisal Batachi. That looked clinical. It's a 1-0 lead for the visitors. We're looking to continue this offensive flair they've displayed. Iwe goes down. He was held. Will this be a car? Doesn't look like it. But a set piece coming from a dangerous area for Minnesota as the Loons look to respond here. Second look. Iwe pivoted left. And that may not have even been particularly necessary from Sergio Rivas. Rivas. It looks like. Pencil would have been able to chase that one down. The touch was heavy from Iwe. Nevertheless, it's a set piece. Khan and Pacheco stand on the ball. Yogo Pacheco, low, driven ball, easily handled, comes back out, and a one hopper, no problem for Michael Creek. Right to his chest. No issues with that. This is played deep to Emmings. Minutes in here, St. Louis and Minnesota, 1-0. This broadcast is presented by Lena Health, the official health care provider, Minnesota United FC2. St. Louis attacking once more, just over the head of Glover. Still in a dangerous area, it's Klein, who off balance tried to guide that to the near side post. It'll sail over the crossbar. No issues there for Emmings. John Klein has been the primary goal scorer for St. Louis City 2 this season, nine of them on the year. So even though we referenced to you know, the starting forwards here today, Batachi and Glover, and yeah, their goal scoring statistics, just because it does not match the Minnesota tally, does not have any indication of the level of talent on this St. Louis roster. Nevertheless, Klein has provi been providing plenty of goal scoring punch as well for City 2 in Bobby Murphy. Lyon went to St. Louis University. He's been in good form. Scored in the lone goal in that win against LAFC2 on the road. And a race against Real Monarchs. Juan 
Ron Kuzane is an option for City 2 today as well. He is listed as a potential substitute. It's a good ball through to the far side. Handled well in the ends. Britton Fisher was there. Jesse Kahn does well to win this one back. A chance here for Minnesota. Played to the far side, shot, and this one is leveled up just like that. And the pressure forces the giveaway, and the Loons have knotted it up at one apiece. It's Cameron Lacey with the goal, his eighth of the season. And it was a sure strike. Lined it up and put it in the back of the net. It's the giveaway here. Malik Jesse Khan doesn't rush things, lays it off, and it's perfectly placed into the lower corner. That is a very capable response from Minnesota. One apiece here in the 19th minute. Cam Lacey, the Miami native by way of UNC Charlotte, a 22-year-old who signed in May, a one-year deal with the club option for the following year. It's goal number eight on the campaign. And you figure with what he's done this year, there are plenty of conversations about his future with the team and what he can provide down the road. 17 goals, first team, all conference in his time with UNC Charlotte. It's a Jamaican youth national team experience as well. Very talented player. Good looking goal there as well. It's a fun start here in Minnesota. Coming into the match, it looked as a, a matchup. We looked at the storylines. Could St. Louis continue this offensive tear? It's Minnesota's defense, he steps forward. They have taken in recent games. Could that continue? Has it been the, the best numbers defensively for Minnesota over the course of the year? But for the last couple of matches, it certainly put some solid things together. For City 2, that wasn't as much a defensive blunder as a, a poor giveaway, great execution ensuing possession for Minnesota. City 2 trying to create things here in response themselves. Itachi couldn't get around. And Minnesota dispossessed. Glover tried to head it down to Itachi. The foul there. Josh Mayer winning possession back. Here's Itachi. Already a goal today, does well. Get that to Glover. Instead, shot from outside the box is blocked. Second ball is no issue. Slowly roll for a throw in deep in their own territory for Minnesota. tempo and style of game being played right now for both of these sides. This match certainly opened up even in the first 20 plus minutes. Tachi with two really good opportunities, able to convert on the more difficult one. City two mistake in their own half. And they had to pay for it with a goal. Cam Lacey. But a set piece now. Max Schneider stands on the ball. A discussion here between Itachi and Jabot, I believe. Way, beg your pardon.
Schneider whips this in far side. City two first to get to it. Cleared out after it was pinballing around the box for a dangerous moment or two. Soto knows that they'll constantly face high pressure today from the St. Louis squad that brands themselves on that style of play. Oh, Iwe here in space, played at center, takes a deflection. Jesse Kahn around the official and over the crossbar. There have been spurts of this game played at a breakneck pace. That was Zaydan Bello. I beg your pardon on the shot. Watch Bell in the middle of your screen have to navigate around the official. You wonder if that influenced the shot in any way. That was Jesse Kahn, I beg your pardon. Bell on the far side of your screen. 1 1 our score in the 25th minute. Goals from Cam Lacey. Faisal Batachi. Separated by just five minutes here in the first half. Entertaining game for any neutral. Entertaining game for any fan. Batachi will play this center. It's John Klein. A couple of options here. He'll slow it down. Bobby Murphy was talking about his offense. He said, I think the big thing for so long throughout this year is Played without a, a recognized forward. We have high hopes for Caden Glover, but he's with the first team. He was with the U-17s for the Academy playoffs. That was another six weeks. We didn't get to see him. He said now Glover's been settled in for about a month. You can see the progress. Eway making a run. And held off by Vensel. And then the foul committed. That's well done by Michael Vensel. Eway was battling with the St. Louis center back. The ball leading him. Just a little bit too far to his left. That allowed Wenzel to shield him just enough. And then the brief shove, knocking Wenzel over, ending that sequence. Wenzel's played nearly every minute of every game this season. June 15th against Austin was the only match that Wenzel didn't go the full 90 in a game he's played this year. Now his 22nd appearance of the season. Does have a goal to his name this year as well. Establishing himself as a center back to evaluate for the first team moving forward. Soda trying to earn possession of the midfield. That pass a little bit too inside. Lacey couldn't get around his defender there. Ben Soul just played back to his keeper.
last start was the LAFC match on July 30th. That was a 4-2 win. Shots combined between the two teams thus far tonight. It's felt as if St. Louis have been a little bit more on the front foot through nearly half an hour now, though it doesn't feel at the same time that Minnesota has been in constant defense. But you look at some of the numbers, 26-13 the advantage in the final third entries for St. Louis. It's a part of the pitch they spent a lot of time in so far. Klein turns. There's a shot from distance, and just getting a hand to it is Fred Emmings pairing it away for a corner kick. That was Max Schneider giving it a go. Not a bad effort. Emmings had to be sure. It's another corner kick here for St. Louis City, too. to the far side again. Schneider will commit the foul. I asked Minnesota head coach Cameron Knowles, how do you feel this team has grown over the course of the summer, particularly the last few matches, last few weeks? The team is putting things together. He just talked about the maturity of this group tight-knit they are, the unselfishness. In reference to maturity, he said, look, you know, we have to train in different venues different times of the year. We got three different venues this week. And we have leadership here that, that, return, that returns, help the younger guys from that perspective, you know, how to train at a high level, no matter the venue, no matter the day. Talk about the unselflessness. He said there may be next pro guys on a contract. Don't get as much time for a certain game when a first team guy comes down as Batachi. Going to the near side here, sealed off momentarily and then sent away. He says there's no poor body language or, or reservations. The first team guy has to come down, get a couple more minutes in a game instead of a next pro contract guy. They take that in stride. Keep practicing hard, moving forward. Very happy with the high level of character on the team this year. Western Conference table, it's a bit of a jumble in the middle. About seven matches left for most teams. Only four points separating playoff contenders from those chasing that spot. There's time to fight their way back. The work to be done as well. Half an hour in here. Get out of control there from Jubo. However, foul first. Free kick for Minnesota. Hello, we'll play it back. Forces Britton Fisher to chase it down. Fisher, the 19 year old out of Greenville. He's played into some traffic. A foul will keep things with Minnesota here. A tough pass to handle. Josh Mayer committing the foul. It's taking a moment here for Minnesota to get up. It's Cam Lacey. He needed a second or two. Looks to be okay. Thank you. 
Gil Perez. And another giveaway here. The Minnesota strike for a second time. It's chipped to the near side. It's Iwe. Still with it. And dispossessed. That took a little bit too much time to get to Iwe. And he wasn't able to find his way around the defender there. It's for a moment as if Minnesota might be able to capitalize. So that's a great touch. Iwe chasing this one down. Emmanuel Iwe in the box. Turns middle. And can't find his teammate there. Zaydan Bello with it. Iway getting so involved. Five goals to Iway's name this year. And Paddleford. Back to Rodas. Central reach of Iwe there. for a teammate. Schneider with the ball towards the touch line. Well done to settle it on the far side there. Zach Jensen, the 19-year-old, with good touch. He'll hand it off to Ezra Armstrong. Jensen making his 12th. Excuse me, 11 MLS appearances to his name this year. Jensen played 78 minutes in the last match against Real Monarchs. Zach Jensen. Alternating between the next pro side and first team this year, 19 year old. Just about 10 minutes left in the first half here. So he has to retrieve it. Both of these clubs looking to make it three consecutive victories. Minnesota has scored three goals in that span. St. Louis eights, six points all the same. Batachi in the center, couldn't bring it down. It's still a chance perhaps here, flicked in. Row for City 2. Not really taking any chances on the far side. Daniel Marquez. Daniel Marquez, the Sweden native. Defensively there. Zaydan Bello himself in the middle of that interplay. Seven to three advantage in shots taken for St. Louis. 0.48 expected goals. 0.14 for Minnesota. 
Good move here on the near side to advance the ball. Battleford still going with it. Distributes to Eway on the near side. Eway lofting it in. Klein trying to shield Malik Jesse Khan. Eway winds up with it. Nice spin, but lost possession. Eway needing a moment after that sequence. If that's exhaustion or if he tweaked something. Snyder had to take it away. Checo. Brent Fisher. Battling for. It was won by Paddleford. Just made that strong run a moment ago. Now Paddleford fouled by Klein, who thought he might have something developing if no whistle had been blown there. Instead, it go the other way. Second look at that. Klein, too much contact there for the official. A touch. Bello in the center of the pitch. He's still going. Too strong in the end. The corner kick earns. Hit on Bello. Nice acceleration and a burst in the middle of the field, taking on defenders. Recently played in the Australian top flight. Melbourne victory joined Minnesota United in November of 2022. Malik Jesse Kahn, oh, he finds the net. How quickly was that done by Jesse Kahn after the throw? 2-1, Minnesota. Well, that's a great pass from Bello and a nifty move to find space. And Malik Jesse Kahn just puts it out of the reach of Emmings. And Minnesota has scored a pair of goals after St. Louis struck first here today. And it's a 2-1 advantage for the Loons here as the first half starts winding down. Third goal of the season for Malik Jesse Khan. Like a burst of speed, the quickness. Give Bello a lot of credit. He, he since that run from Malik Jesse Khan after the the pass on the near sideline. From that Tobago International, one of the youngest members of this team, making his presence felt. Minnesota perhaps at it again here. Bello. Over the end line there. And Bello had just made that nice run, which helped earn the throw in. Earns the assist before that was all said and done. Oh, a lot of credits. Oh, has some MLS experience this year. He made his debut in March. A short-term agreement with the first team. Very mature response from Minnesota here after conceding the first goal. In the 13th minute, Paddleford now creating space himself. We'll play it back to the goal scorer. Nice communication there. It goes without saying, Minnesota has settled into this game nicely, despite, at times, St. Louis somewhat feeling like they were on the front foot. Numbers would validate that. The statistics are leveling a bit here towards the end of the half. Jensen, dancing, finds his man center, and it's just outside the post. John Klein wasn't far away. Emmings guessed the wrong way. 
If Klein was able to direct that towards the far post, could have been a problem. Center your screen, got past the defender. Klein was that close to his 10th goal of the season. He's among the league leaders. 13 goals, tops in MLS Next Pro right now. Race for the Golden Boot. I've seen plenty of standout performances. Nick Firmino from Atlanta United, too, leads the league right now with 13 alongside Myers from uh, NYCFC, too, with 13 as well. Matt Myers. Papa Ndoy of Houston has put himself in third with back-to-back -back hat tricks recently. He's now on 11 goals. And so frustrated. That wasn't ruled St. Louis possession. Just a couple minutes left here in the first half. Goal in the 13th, 18th, and 40th minute. Very entertaining half of play. More clearance there from Michael Creek. <laughs> Can't do that. Make sure to stick with us for the half, or Michelle and Samar will take us back through the MLS Next Pro Invitational. Spotlight, as always, and highlights from midweek matchups. Coming up here at the half here on MLSNextPro.com. MLS YouTube, but that got over the top. It's Klein, a one-on-one -on -one chance here, and he levels it up to a piece. John Klein, right before the half. That's a disastrous way to end the half for Minnesota, just seconds before going into the locker room. John Klein takes full advantage of that opportunity. Creek sends it deep, and the header just gets over. Britton Fisher and Klein slots that home. It's his 10th goal of the season, and it will likely cap what has been a thrilling first half here in Blaine. You see just that one minute of stoppage time upcoming. St. Louis steals a goal before they head to the locker room. John Klein will simply not miss chances like that. It's an unfortunate bounce. Fisher was too close to it after it took the deflection. Each of those goals, the last two of them coming in the blink of an eye. Menzel is fouled. Frustrated Minnesota contingent. Let's its voices be heard. Those whistles signal the end of the half. It's two to two after 45 minutes of play. Minnesota United and St. Louis City giving us a very fun evening affair here. Two goals apiece at National Sports Center Stadium. I wonder what the second half may bring second half drama that is perhaps in store for us. 2-2, our score after 45 minutes of play. A few weeks ago in Salt Lake City, MLS Next Pro invited teams from leagues around the world to participate in the MLS Next Pro Invitational. Samara and Michelle recap the second year of this important event. Greetings from the home of Real Monarchs in Salt Lake City, Utah. Tuesday night culminated the second ever MLS Next Pro Invitational. I'm Samara Perez and Michelle and I are here to take you through the most impactful moments of the international competition. In the home side's tournament opener, Real Monarchs took on Crystal Palace's U21 squad. 
Academy product and 16-year-old Owen Anderson scored the game winner to give Real Monarchs their first win of this year's tournament. It was also a pure example of the international experience young players receive by being given opportunities like the MLS Next Pro Invitational. It means everything. It's definitely a dream come true, especially to score. It's definitely a great, a great atmosphere to play into. So it's a great opportunity for especially kids like me who are younger and haven't gotten much time in the season. And it's a great opportunity for us to get time and show up in moments like that. The experience was also something our league coaches considered beneficial in terms of strengthening their competitiveness, despite the friendly nature of the tournament. Whitecaps FC2 head coach Ricardo Clark touched on some of those benefits following their first appearance in the tournament. This is a great opportunity to play um, an opponent, a European opponent, uh, someone we're not used to seeing on a regular basis uh, within the league, and uh, that exposure is, is valuable in, in, in their development, right? So. Um, yeah, we approached the game very seriously and very competitively and, and uh, I was proud of our group and how we, uh, uh, we showed that on the field and um, again, it was, it, was a, it was a very good, very good uh, game to be part of for me and for the group. Another highlight of the tournament, the world-class facilities of the Real Salt Lake organization that were used by both the domestic and European teams alike and were praised highly by all that were involved with the tournament. The state-of-the-art training grounds, the versatility, and the all-in-one development site was lauded by both the English Premier League and Bundesliga Academy clubs. But to, to come out and play on this great stadium, uh, it, it's a, uh, it's good for the players as well. You know, we we like to expose the players to play, you know, under floodlights and uh, you know have a uh, an atmosphere. Um, so it's been good. And uh, yesterday we were we had the privilege to uh, watch Hoffenheim play yesterday against Colorado. Um, so yeah, the hospitality has been brilliant as well, and uh, yeah, Salt Lake's looked after us well. Yeah, you have to look around. I think uh, it's very nice that we get the possibility to play in the stadium. Uh, we are used to play on grass fields in Germany, in, especially in Hoffenheim. We have uh, many of grass fields because the weather is not so hot or not so cold. Mm -hmm. And so it's fantastic for us to play here, to play on this ground. Yeah, so everything is nice. Now, seeing the facilities up close and personal, you see how it provides an immersive place for these guys to grow both as players and as people. The experiences and even the challenges that the MLS Next Pro Invitational provided are also critical for players who aspire to reach the world stage in the future. Obviously, there's lots of challenges, the heat, the time zone differences, uh, the training times as well, we're having to train early because of the heat. So, and there's a lot of dead time, but this is all the things that if you're going to become a top class player that you're going to have to experience yourself for. If you want to go and play in World Cups uh, for your countries, then these are all the challenges that can, you know, teams can fail on unless, unless you're experiencing them. With another successful MLS Next Pro Invitational in the books, we thank our esteemed European guests for bringing their talents here to the States and to the Real Monarchs organization for being exceptional hosts. We hope you enjoyed our coverage from right here in Utah. On behalf of Michelle Montaigne, I'm Samara Perez. Thank you for tuning in to the 2023 MLS Next Pro Invitational. Great event and great stuff there as it's halftime here in Minnesota. Balloons in City 2 got it up at two apiece for first half goals to start off this Sunday evening affair at National Sports Center Stadium. AJ Ricketts alongside you here on MLSNextPro.com and the MLS YouTube page at the half. Uh, let's take a look back at some of the best player performances in MLS Next Pro. It's Michelle. She has the spotlight. MLS Next Pro's Match Day 20 certainly brought the heat. <laughs> I'm Michelle Montaigne with your MLS Next Pro players in the spotlight. Starting with your MLS Next Rising Star, if you guessed it was another Union 2 player, you would be correct. But this time it's a first time honoree, Francis Westfield. He is the fourth Union 2 player to win the honor this season. And the defender stole the spotlight when he opened scoring for the Philly side with his first ever professional goal. It didn't hurt that his buddy, who's no stranger to the back of the net, Stefan Strajanovic, helped him out with the assist. Also matching a first in his career, Papa Ndoye, earning back-to-back -back hat tricks in Houston Dynamo 2's last two matches. 
He not only became the first player to earn consecutive game hat tricks in regular season history, he also becomes the first MLS Next Pro player to win back-to-back -back player of the match day honors. But maybe more impressive, two of his three goals came just three minutes apart and two of his six over the last two weeks were successfully converted kicks from the spot. Now converting goals from a little bit further out, our goal of the match day honoree, New York Red Bulls 2's Ovante Mullings. After the ball was punched out by Reds 2 keeper Jacob Jackson, Mullings absorbed the ball off the rebound, took one tap, then curled it right past a wall of defenders and into the upper left hand corner of the box, just as they drew it up. And rounding out our match day 20 honorees, your team of the match day, St. Louis City 2. Their offensive fireworks had City Park lit up. Their 4 0 win was led by John Klein's brace and supplemented by goals from Joaquin Nilsson and Juan Kazane. In the net, Eric Walker anchored a stout defense while earning his second clean sheet of the season. Congratulations to all of our honorees in the spotlight. Enjoy the doubleheader, match day 21 and 22 coming at you this week. Time here at National Sports Center Stadium. Two to two, our score, Minnesota United in St. Louis City. Very entertaining first half. Wouldn't mind uh, a similar vibe in the final 45 minutes. AJ Ricketts here alongside you. Match day 21 took place on Wednesday and Thursday. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the midweek. Sit top of the box, headed in. Goal. Cross for Miller. Settles it. Shot. Goal. Grabbed by a Smith. All alone. Block. Still loose. Can a Yosu finish it? Escobar lifts it. Top of the box, Bulma touches it up, goal! Then Solis got a red card and left. And then in the second half, there's a goal for Orlando, down a man. And Yoshi's made 10 MLS appearances this year with two starts. Good in the first half, kicked up and in! Orlando suddenly back in this one. And has put together some really good performances, including on the road. This is the group for Ibrahim Sakaiga. Leaks Cup playing Sofo now. Blocks the clearance. Play back and the shot block. Mosquera looks for the opening goal. Thompson directly off the TFC turnover. That's the difference right now. But an opportunity for TFC to tie it up. It's through Marcucci and in. Goal scorer Barra. His cross played in on the far post and what a goal! Clawing their way back in. They'd only had two shots on goal at that point throughout this game. And now they steal a victory on the road. TFC2 making three wins out of their last four. Well. Charges in and gets it. Nice tactic to let that move through. Shot box, shot goal! Coming up. In the box. Good angle and a goal. Headed up and in. Center's goal. Not being able to hang on. Flicked off and off the post. An early opportunity off the service from John Dennis. 
to the net. Sunderland turned over in a dangerous area. And a shot here, and that's two for Myers. MD Myers. He has the first half hat trick. NYCFC hosting Orlando this weekend, then traveling to Chicago. And a long layoff before a trip to FC Cincinnati. Has another shooting opportunity, and it'll be the fourth goal here. And of course, an expanded league, an expanded playoff roster, and a tougher league as Crown Legacy has come in and Huntsville, both of them in playoff spots right now. All right, welcome back as we take a look at schedule and scores throughout the league. You saw Enter Miami taking it on the chin there. They're up 2 1 right now over Chicago at the half to take a look at the schedule for the rest of the week. It's Wednesday and Friday appetizers before the large slates of games on Saturday. Whitecaps FC2 trying to get things going on Sunday. They just slid out of the, or underneath the playoff line, I should say. That'll be an important matchup for them at home against Austin FC2. Brown Legacy has already wrapped up their playoff spot. What an inaugural season it's been. Uh, the MLS next pro level for them. That's a look at the upcoming league schedule. Here on MLS Next Pro. Glad to have you with us at National Sports Center Stadium. First half highlights, let's go. There were plenty of them. Klein to Batachi in the early part of the match. Batachi had just missed one from six. That one was more difficult, but that was clinical. Whipping it, curling it around his defender. He would not be denied twice. That's the third goal of the season for Faisal Batachi, who had a very solid first half. Link Jesse Khan would not be brought down, earned the giveaway. Played it to his teammate, who slotted it in the goal. Cam Lacey, number eight on the year. Minnesota was taking advantage of some giveaways all throughout the course of that first half. Malik Jesse gone wouldn't be done there. That's not the last time we'll say his name in this highlight package. Daniel Iwe getting around the defender. Khan nearly had a goal there. Had to fight his way around the official. Good dive in net. Here is the goal from uh, Malik Jesse Khan starting his run right after distributing to Bello. A quick little sidestep and putting that in past Michael Creek to give Minnesota a 2 1 lead. Third goal of the season for Khan. But seconds before the end of the half, Klein getting in behind. Britton Fisher was playing that a little bit too close. And Klein nets his 10th goal of the season. Flying time at the end of the half. Let's take a look at the Western Conference standings once more. Colorado Rapids leading the way. Austin FC creeping a little bit closer to that top spot. Just four points of separation. And you look here, sixth spot at the moment for Minnesota. St. Louis City, as it stands, and these are live stats, so if this score held, St. Louis would, of course, pick up a point. We've got to see who would pick up the second point. In, uh, potential shootouts. Of course, two points to a shootout winner, one point to the, the loser of a shootout. And it's just about set for second half action here in Blaine. I mentioned before the broadcast, a 70% chance of rain throughout the area at the moment, but it has held off thus far. Good thing it's helped lead to what has been a really fun match. Both these teams know how. Points are at a premium as this playoff push has really begun. Three points can go a long way here for City 2. They're playing some of their best soccer of the season right now. In the last two and a half games, 10 goals. We're going to continue that. Minnesota huddles. Get set to begin the second half here. There were some certain defensive lapses throughout the course of that first half, but they compromised City 2 with their defensive pressure. That's something St. Louis is very well known for throughout their next pro side, throughout their first team. High pressure, earning chances, generating opportunities with it, but it was Minnesota, it felt like, who executed that in a better way.
City 2 has some clinical finishing, including towards the end of the half. No can just have some, uh, some issues getting started here. <laughs> some gamesmanship, perhaps, between Matachi and Cam Lacey, but we are uh, eventually underway here in the second half. Minnesota, the Grays moving from left to right. Malik Jesse Khan has space to operate central. We'll play it far side. It's Iwe with it. Iwe took a deflection and a quick corner kick. Just 22 seconds into the second half. Minnesota wasting no time. Pushing forward here. Exactly, exactly what that man Cameron Knowles wants to see. Kind of take the corner. On the ground, trickling around, cleared away by Glover. Bobby Murphy talked about it. During the pregame conversation, I asked him keys to this match. What, is, what do you have to emphasize? And he pointed specifically to keeping Minnesota out of transition. So they've got a good front four. They can stretch the game. They like jamming things up. We've got to make sure we're compact, not let them play through us. And our reactions when the ball turns over, being really sharp. That was costly early. And now Batachi advancing forward. Faisal Batachi already with one goal, flicks it far side. Oh, what a save! That is terrific in net, denying a goal. It was destined for the back of the net, but a terrific save made. Fred Emmings outstretched. That is terrific. But Tachi, as good a pass as, as you can ask for, and Emmings was up to the task himself. Fred Emmings keeps this one deadlocked at two apiece. He has really to continue impressing goal. Eight saves against North Texas the other game. It was his highest this season. Nearly broke the club record of nine in a single match. Emmings has three clean sheets this year. What a big save in that moment. Tachi nearly added an assist to his numbers today. Already has that goal. Nearly has two goals. Tachi, the London native, in good form right now. 22-year-old has played in the National League, League Two, the championship in England at nine appearances in the championship. Experience with Queen's Park, most recently played on loan with Aldershot Town. Looks like it was out on Minnesota. But it will be a throw in for the Loons. Fisher couldn't keep it there, and now St. Louis looking to advance. Climb the target. And then the whistle blows. City 2 in Minnesota with bright moments here in the first four or so minutes of the second half. Schneider.
No cards were given in that first half. Officials letting them play today. It really was only one or two sequence, was it? That idea might have been warranted. Eleven to five advantage in shots taken right now for St. Louis. Took a moment, the whistle blows. That was out of play. Tachi. Hear the winds in the background here, but still no rain yet. Substitutions at the half either. Glover does well to try to shield it in the end, though. A goal kick here for Hemmings. Minutes. Would have loved to end the first half with a goal and start the second with one as well. Fine in possession here. Ensign with some free space on the near side and set it centered. Glover high of the crossbar. Good intentions there. Glover unable to redirect. But he was the first to get ahead to it. Watch the service in. Schneider with the delivery and Glover just a little bit under that. That's well done from City 2 though. Bobby Murphy will appreciate more buildups like that. With a foul, will it be more? That might be the final warning for Michael Wenzel. Tachi will be the first of this one. Rodas in defense, but Tachi playing it forward to Glover. Glover got to it. Caden Glover, some nifty footwork on the far side. Couldn't be brought in by Schneider. Khan, intercepted. Too heavy a touch, trying to break the other way. Ten minutes into the second half here. 54th minute, Minnesota and St. Louis, two goals apiece. St. Louis scoring in the 13th and 45th minute. St. Louis had the first goal, Minnesota responded five minutes later. Match all the more meaningful, impactful potentially for St. Louis. Going against a foe that is right above that playoff line. He's bouncing towards the center. Mitzel goes down. It's a good recovery. That looks like a precarious moment for a second or two there. Wenzel saying, well, you're going to give me some final warning for all the fouls. There's been an accumulation as well. There's some on Minnesota. Acknowledgement there between Wenzel and Lacey as they jog back down. Obviously held there, draws a foul. Aiden 
quickly. Klein. Wasn't able to stay in front there, and now Minnesota quickly triggers it in. Battleford. Made some nice runs today. UA lets it trickle out of play after the slight touch. Battleford. Mapleton native. Uwe goes down around the edge. Not enough for any whistle or consideration of a foul. This is not the same match as last time these two teams played to a scoreless draw. Going to a shootout. St. Louis barely had a shot on goal, if any, in that match. Not the same profile of game here today. I don't think many are complaining, though. Ezra Armstrong. Jensen. Goes to the end line and gets a corner. Armstrong playing a bit more forward there. Plenty of professional experience to his name, most recently in the USL with the Pittsburgh River Hounds. Another corner for City 2. Played on the ground. This one from the training pitch. There was a foul outside the box on Malik Jesse Khan, and that will be the first booking of the match. So you saw the contacts in. That was. That wasn't Glover went down. That was Schneider on the service hit. So the yellow to Malik Jesse Khan. There are all sorts of options here for City Two. 58th minute. Dangerous set piece upcoming. Minnesota will have to be sharp defensively here. They've got a two man wall as Emmings calls out what he's looking for. Now, just Khan standing in that area. What does Max Schneider do here? Would he go towards that near post? I'll look for a teammate. Schneider has not scored this year. Leads the team, however, with four assists. <laughs> Schneider, that went off of Jesse Kahn. The one-man wall works. Crowd appreciates that. I'll tell you what, though, that got past Kahn. It looked like it was heading in the area of the top 90. A bad effort. Flying over the top, it's Glover. Taps it forward. Oh, no, he missed it. Oh, it looked like Glover was through. How did that not find the Nets? Everything but the finish. Oh, goodness. Second look. Beautifully chipped in by Clyde. Glover was first to it. Got past Emmings. Oh, all he needed to do was tap it in. Oh, palms in the faces of his City 2 teammates. That is one Glover will finish 10 out of 10 times. But not right there. I wonder if he just slipped with his plant foot or... Wow, he was, he was in. That is now a pair of opportunities here in the second half at City 2 if they're unable to take all three points from this one. Those are a couple of sequences that they'll look back on. John Klein right in front of net, unable to get it past the diving Emmings. And then Glover point blank. This is taken far post. Vensel first to it. So will be bounced around, punched away. It's sent in. All of a sudden, there was a gray jersey on it. 
Was unable to guide it towards goal was Eway. Watch Eway in the middle of your screen. Quick acceleration gets behind the defense. He certainly was on side. City two. Ella sleeps somewhat there. Fortuitous to still be level. You see how quickly this game could have potentially swung. A missed chance from Glover. And Eway nearly made them pay just seconds later. Checo. Haven't said his name too much today. Paddleford. Corner kick. Gone to take the corner. Offs it to the center. Josh Mayer headed it away first. Brendan Fisher, another corner kick upcoming. Over an hour into this match, still no substitutions. No second half goal. City two have had the best two opportunities here in the second half. Oh, Minnesota nearly was able to find the net just moments ago from Eway. Driven far post. Vinsel so tough. Vinsel and Mayer, those two center backs today. You defend set piece as well. Panel forward on the far side here. On a spin on it. Oh, City 2 may be on the break here. Caden Glover with space on the far side. Glover sends it center. And out of the reach of Jensen. Is that out? It was not. Well done. Oh, what a spin. Armstrong draws a foul. Reinitiated quickly. City 2 preferring not to wait around. Batachi making a run on the near side. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Maybe the briefest of lulls a few minutes ago, but it, this match has reverted back to its first half form. The question is, will the, the goal scoring follow that as well? Batachi to Klein. Tried to spray it far side. That was well out of the range. Vinny, teammate, in particular Rivas, who was the closest to it. Okay, I just did it. Minnesota advancing here. A good pass in. It's Eway has a man center. Khan with it. Lost it. But Pacheco was all by himself in the center. Eway didn't see him. Could have possibly been a tap in for a goal. Sixty-fifth minute, two goals apiece. Don't leave your seat, don't leave your stream. This might, uh, this game could flip. See the next goal in an instant. The way these two teams have scored today. It's another strong run. Connor center has it here. 
will play it back. Bella lays it off. Header. Right into the direction of Creek, although he'll stop play immediately. Like a pair of Minnesota teammates. Some head contacts. Let's go back to that Glover sequence. What a ball chipped in here from Klein. Glover gets past. And yeah, he's slipping. He's certainly falling to the turf there. Wonder if he was able to stay on balance. You don't wonder, you, you know. He was, even if he was tapping that in with his right foot. It's a shocking miss. Caden Glover has impressed so many around the organization since joining the St. Louis program. Year became the first player born in 2007 to take the pitch in an MLS game. So we're going to have our first substitution to the match. John Klein will come off, and another capable goal-scoring presence will enter for him, and Juan Kazane. Also, the game number 28, Fidel Perez, and entering the game number 98, E.J. Alazor. E.J. Palazzolo also enters. Miguel Perez will head to the bench. So a bit more experience in in the midfield for St. Louis. Perez, the 18-year-old Palazzolo, 25-year-old. Perez and Glover, we spotlighted in the early part of the game. It was only three years ago, Perez was told by his club team that uh, he was only gonna be a part-time player, told him he'd be coming off the bench, playing time no longer guarantee. And now three years later, he's already made his MLS debut, signed a professional contract in February. Perez's day here is complete. This round of applause for the Minnesota faithful. Their teammates here. Juan Mascara will enter. Emmanuel Iwe will head to the bench after that sequence where he had to be evaluated. Be precautious with Iwe. Mascara, the 21 year old from Colombia, enters. It's on a one year loan through the, uh, the end of this month, actually. It's broadcast presented by One Health, official health care provider, Minnesota United. St. Louis right back on the front foot. Jensen's at the 18. Jensen curling, another great save. Emmings keeps it level again. What a high level half right now from Fred Emmings. Wow, that was a great ball. It looks like it might reach that far post, but Jensen is denied. Hemmings, the 19-year-old from St. Paul, making his impact felt here in the second half. But it's yet another terrific chance, though, for St. Louis, who's had more of them here in the second half. Armstrong. Hey, 
innings. Full extension. Emming started his career as a striker. He kept growing and his size started giving coaches a reason to move him into the net. Joined the Development Academy in 2017. Spent plenty of time training with the first team. 13 appearances in Next Pro last year did Emmings. So this is knocked out of play. Minnesota can find the extra points in some fashion here today. Fred Emmings will be a huge reason why. Some crafty dribbling here from Armstrong. Minnesota able to take it away. Great slide. Michael Vinsel. Little words on the far sideline with Paddleford. Vinsel, the former. U17 and U19 German Youth National Team captain. To your contract at the moment. Iron Man right now for the City 2 roster. Plays about every minute. Extra defender coming to harass Malik Jesse Kahn. The throw in here for Minnesota. Pass here, looking for the centering. Nothing coming out of that. Scored the first goal for Minnesota. Armstrong has to settle with a clearance out of play. Cedric Jabot tackled by Glover. They play on. It's a good turn in. Mosquera centers to Jesse Kahn. Ball blocked. Jensen comes to help out, but it's straight to Minnesota. Shot from distance into the foot of Vintzel. Marquez settles, and now play will be stopped. Back in the area of where Jabot went down. There's that tackle of Glover on Cedric Jabot. Play continued. Glover is actually the one still down. He'll be given a yellow. Glover receives the yellow. St. Louis has gone to the bench twice with Kuzane and Palazzolo, and it looks like their third sub will enter now as Klein is walking, or Glover, excuse me, is walking off. Makai Joyner will be next in. Academy product. 
Joyner's had a flair for the dramatic this year at the game-winning penalty against Austin. And the game-tying goal against Tacoma in the 94th minute. He played one minute of that match and came in and scored the game-tying goal. to the box, sits out. You know, Pacheco wants to make an impact towards the waning moments of this match. I think he has a shot to his name so far today. That was good acceleration. Defense matched the effort, but a corner kick conceded. And Malik Jesse Khan taking them in those far side corners. Looks like he had to quickly trigger it into Pacheco, is now making his presence back in the box. That wasn't too far off, but in the end, no problem for Creek. Checo trying to encourage his group here. It's been a half where the majority of the real chances have come from City 2. The real chances. Overall, it's been fairly even, four shots apiece. Although 1.02 expected goals for City 2, 0.65 in the second half here for Minnesota. Come the loons again, Cam Lacey to Pacheco. An extra pass center just outside the post. It was Zaydon Bello. Pacheco running back saying, keep that up. Keep up that form. That looks good there from the loons. Pacheco looks for a moment, perhaps could have settled and fired a shot. Instead unselfish, finds Bello. Couldn't guide it past Creek. It's one of the better chances here in the second half. Minnesota United. Four first half goals. Are we destined for a shootout or will either of these sides find their third goal of the evening? Sala. A bit of frustration in the body language of Caden Glover as he walked off the pitch moments ago. He had the best chance of anybody today. Just lost his footing on this turf here as Pacheco takes that in the face. Looks like he took a bit of exception initially to that. Armstrong was the one who kicked it. Pacheco needing to be wrapped for a second time here. Certainly don't think there was any ill intent to that from Armstrong. Certainly doesn't, still probably feels uh, Less than ideal for Pacheco, all the same. A couple subs getting ready for St. Louis as well as Dude Armstrong and Nolan McGuire getting ready to go on that sideline.
Malik Jesse Khan. Much too heavy. Cam Lacey was the only one near the area. And would have no chance for that. So Dita Armstrong and Nolan McGuire coming on the pitch. Faisal Batachi and Ezra Armstrong. Those substitutes who will be heading off. The players who will head off. Batachi had the opening goal for Minnesota. Third goal of the season. Freak waited a little bit. It got a little dicey. No problem in the end. Matachi scored in the 13th. Minnesota responded five minutes later. City two advancing again here. Good pass to the near side. Makai Joyner into the arms of Emmings. Central handled. A failed clearance. Well, that was a dangerous moment. Yensen. Schneider couldn't get to it there. Whistle here. The week Asandi is getting sent to sub in for Minnesota as well. Nineteen year olds from Togo. Each of these squads looking for a spark towards the finish line here. So Misanvi will enter. Cam Lacey, the goal scorers for Minnesota, will exit. Zanvi making his 12th appearance. Three assists to his name this year. Has not scored. He's played in 353 minutes this year. Another forward on here for Minnesota United. Signed in November of last year from the U19 Academy. Jensen from the parking lot. We've seen Jensen be a little bit more aggressive here in the second half. Yeah, 11 MLS appearances to his name this year. Danish youth national team experience as well. A little over five minutes left here in regulation before a potential shootout situation. Zolo finds the teammate center. Nice run being made. Flag is up. Joyner left a little bit too early there. A bit too far a spot.
Minnesota readying another substitute here at the moment as Alisa Randall will come in for Diogo Pacheco in a moment. It's a defender on for a forward. You wonder if Minnesota looking to get to the shootout here. Chabot ensures possession stays with Minnesota. During the 87th minute. Looks like we'll have that next substitute here. Randall in for Pacheco here in the 87th. Pacheco unable to find the goal today. Two goals in his last 12 matches, but you remember how electric a start to the season it was for him. Had a brace in the season opener at Real Monarchs. Pacheco, an amazing story. Comes over from Portugal. Attended the University of Akron. This is played over the top, too strong. Found out right before college, on exit physical in Portugal, that he actually had cancer, had to fly right back, have surgery, get that removed. He's been one of the more impressive players in MLS Next Pro this year since becoming an all-conference player at the University of Akron. have another goal in store here in regulation. Push it, push it. A contact there. Britton Fisher in the area. Kai Joyner went down as he trots back towards the front third here. The ninth minute now, Schneider. Look to deliver it in here in a moment. Schneider whipping it in. Oh, just outside the near post. It was hard to tell how close that might be off the header initially. Great service in. Joyner was able to flick it. it. Did take a touch. Whipped far post. And right back towards the area. It'll be five minutes of stoppage time. Sent in again. Catching practice for Emmings. Joyner got a header to each of the last two sequences. Have to watch him in those moments. Minnesota pushing forward. Nice. Bella wasn't able to get to it. That's great defense. Randall, sidestepping a defender. Randall still with it here, laying it off. He's open centrally where the flag was up. Randall and Misanvi just a little off timing. Malik Misanvi, who came on a moment ago. Like something was developing there. Good couple of moves there by Randall to even advance it that far. And again, five minutes of stoppage time here. National Sports Center Stadium. It's 
fun a first half as you could have asked for in Blaine. The second half has had plenty of moments as well. Some opportunities. Somehow did not find the net. City wins the ball here. Schneider opens central. Plays it to Joyner, turns, lost it, and a foul. What a move, Nasavi. Dispossessed though. City two on the run here. That went a little bit too quickly in the end. On Kazane losing control of it. Kazane, the 24 year old from Carbondale, made his presence felt this year for City two. It's tied for second on the team in goal, fifth in shots. the top, good ball in, option central and a necessary slide to prevent that pass. Triggered right back in, good defending here from St. Louis. And this will be a booking on Kazane. have any bookings in the first half. We've seen quite a few of them here in the, the second. The second look at it too. And just tripping up. Jabot was tripped there as he was trying to accelerate forward. Approaching the 94th minute. Tied at two. Malik Jesse Kahn to take the free kick. Khan chips it in. Second ball is straight to Creek. It wouldn't have mattered anyway. The flag was up. had to take a few steps back. And they'll make sure it's even a little further back. About a minute or so away from this being set to a shootout. City two gonna bring some pressure higher up. The throw in for Minnesota. Con turns. Is there one final chance for City Two in the waning moments here? Maybe they're offside because they just held up. And now Minnesota sprinting ahead. That'll be a foul and another booking. And I'll go against Dita Armstrong in the final seconds here. Perhaps the last opportunity on the set piece coming up here with the Loons. Can Minnesota possibly generate anything off this free kick. Steps away from midfield. Let's go. Let's go. 
All right, Drama to finish this off. Khan whips it in. And that'll be the whistle. Well, after a four goal first half, this one is heading to a shootout between Minnesota and St. Louis. Our City 2 had a, a real couple of chances there in the second half. Minnesota, to their credit, did as well. Both teams go scoreless in that final 45 as they'll get ready for kicks from the spot to determine who may take the extra point here. MLS Next Pro has that unique feature when the score's tied after 90 minutes. Michelle and Samara are going to wrap it up and give me the recap of how this will go. regulation, the game will proceed directly to a shootout with kicks from the penalty mark. That brings us to the point system. Similar to other soccer leagues, a team will earn three points with a win at the end of regulation, one point for a tie, and zero points for a loss in regulation. A club will earn two points if the game ends in a tie and they go on to win the shootout that Samara just explained following the end of regulation. Clear a succinct explanation of all that as both teams get some hydration and uh, make their decisions of the order who will shoot. AJ Ricketts alongside you here on MLSNextPro.com. MLS YouTube page. Kicks from the mark. Always good fun. So often we see shootouts in these uh, high-level, high-stakes situations, whether it be World Cup, Champions League. So the, the, the thought of this, the notion of it being a regular season match, yeah, the reactions, the celebrations, will be a bit more reserved than what you see in typical shootout situations. Of course, when we get to the postseason, that will change. But it still makes for good fun, a good learning opportunity, a good pressure opportunity for these players those reps, that experience, he counted upon to come through for an extra points. The City 2 are able to come out victorious here. Both wind up with 32 points at the table, and Minnesota will have 35. If it goes the other way around, Minnesota will have 36 points, and City 2 will have 31. So we'll see how it all shakes out. Schneider walking towards goal to take the first penalty for St. Louis. Schneider signed with St. Louis last February for their inaugural MLS Next Pro season. And three goals, four assists last year. Four assists this season. And has been with the club since the start of this Next Pro initiative. A sensational second half from Fred Emmings. They look to make some more big saves here over the course of this shootout. Max Schneider to start and scores for St. Louis. It's a positive start for City 2 here in the kicks from the mark. No problems there. Just past the diving arms of Emmings. And on Bello to take the first spot kick, meanwhile, for Minnesota. MLS experience to his name this year. Bello runs up to it and fires it in for a goal. Both sides successful in the first round. Zipped up to it. Creek guessed incorrectly. Well done there for Bella. Michael Wenzel, the 21-year-old German. It's the St. Louis center back to take the second penalty for City 2. It is Wenzel. 
Denied by Emmings. Another clutch save from the Minnesota keeper. He's had plenty of them over the course of tonight's match. Stymies Michael Vensel. That wasn't a poorly taken penalty, per se. Hemmings pretty close to that post, did really well. Now Minnesota put themselves up a goal here after two rounds. Malik Jesse Khan, already a goal scorer today. Oh, he's off target here. It glances off the crossbar. Khan upset with himself. Sails just high. Creek had gone the complete opposite way. Both teams miss in that second round. Zizak Jensen. Danish Youth International. Jensen is denied. It's another save. Fred Emmings. Back-to-back -back stops and nets. What a performance this has been tonight. He is willing Minnesota to the potential extra point. No problems there. Fred Emmings is making a statement tonight. Devin Paddleford now to put Minnesota ahead, and he calmly slots that one home. Cool, calm, and collected. Devin Paddleford, and it's 2-1 after three rounds. The Looms just passing it into the back of the net. Creek has guessed the wrong way each time thus far. And now Makai Joyner. Already had a game-winning penalty once this year. City 2 needs this now. Joiner, top corner. Well done. Joiner had missed that. Minnesota could have won it on this kick. Instead of save, and we're right back to where we started. Now it is time for NAUSC 2. Number 46, Juan Mascara. Juan Mascara will step up now. If you're Creek, it'd be easy to get into your head here. The one miss was when he dove the wrong way. Can he make a stop here? Mascara, top shelf himself. Three to two, Minnesota after four rounds. And if Emmings can make yet another save, this one will be over. City two has to score here. It's A.J. Palazzolo, the St. Louis University alum. Started his career at Indiana, where he played in a national championship. Has to score here or it's over. Palazzolo just slips it by Emmings. Well, that would have been fitting for Emmings to make yet another save to end this match. But he made two of them here, the shootout of the five. Guessed correctly here, just it's under his right arm. It's going to come down to Creek. Trying to make a stop here. Cal Marquez looking to win it here for the Loons. What has been his ninth appearance of the year. Marquez can win it here for Minnesota. Steps in. Marquez wins it. Minnesota will take the extra point. The Loons score four of their five in this shootout. And it's a shootout victory for Minnesota United FC2. Creek was oh so close to staying in front of that one. Inches away from his outstretched hands, and Minnesota takes the shootout four to three. It's a well-deserved. Shootout victory, although City 2 will have their 
reservations and things to look over on film. Every reason to feel that this perhaps should have been three points for City too. A frustrating shootout defeat, but an entertaining game all around. Much credit to both of these clubs for the admirable effort they gave us today. Here's the game-winning goal from Marquez. Give Fred Emmings so much credit for his performance in net. Two huge saves in the course of the second half. Two huge saves in the shootout. And Marquez with the game-winning goal for Minnesota United FC2 who will take the extra point here at home. I hope you enjoy that one tonight. One of the more entertaining games across MLS Next Pro this evening. Four first half goals. Minnesota takes two points and kicks from the mark. Brent Consequela is our director today, assisted by Joseph Parker, David Rodriguez, and Fernando Gonzalez, our entire production crew here with Apple TV. I'm AJ Ricketts. Minnesota takes two points, one for City Two as well. One of the more entertaining games across the league tonight. From Blaine, Minnesota, I'm AJ Ricketts. We bid you good night. We'll see you next time. This copyrighted broadcast of MLS Next Pro may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcasted without the express written consent of Major League Soccer.